Okay, so you're looking to buy either you know a 4K Ultra Studio or you're looking to buy a deck link in an enclosure because you're running on a laptop or something that doesn't have you know a PCIe Express port on it, right? And you're debating which one do I get? You know, the this one over here seems like a great bang for the buck. You're talking $500 for the deck link card. You're talking another $350 for the Sonnet enclosure, right? Uh, it's Thunderbolt 3, so you can plug that into your laptop versus you're talking a thousand dollars, a little more for the Ultra Studio, but you know it's got HDMI, it's got some different I/O on it. Which one do I go with? Well, let's get into it. So I'm Brandon from Live Production Mastery, and uh, my recommendation is if you're super techie, right? If you're good with troubleshooting, go with this guy. All right, it is the Sonnet Enclosure. It is the DeckLink Duo Two. Uh, so it is uh, four SDI ports that are usable. A fifth one is for a reference. All right, so it's not going to be that useful, but uh, you can use each one of these as an input or an output. So that is a total of four usable SDI ports. Where on this guy, okay, as you can use this for a lot of things, this is the Ultra Studio 4K Mini. All right, and uh, you really only have two SDI out ports here. You do have an SDI input. All right, you have HDMI in and out as well, but what I've found with this is you're really only using this box for one thing at a time. Yes, there are ways to use you know, uh, multiple ports on this at the same time, but that's like really tricky. Um, whereas just using the SDI out ports, maybe using an SDI or HDMI input at the same time, those are fine. But that's still only like one, two, maybe three I.O. ports at a single time, whereas this guy, you can use all four. Now, if you're looking for reliability, simplicity, it's always going to work. Every time I plug it in, I'm not going to have problems with it. That would be the Ultra Studio. Now, I've used both of these countless times, okay? And from my use in different softwares, right, uh, if I pull up some software here, I use ProPresenter a lot for my key and fill, lower third, playbacks, graphics, things like that. Um, so ProPresenter has been great. A lot of people know about it. Uh, if you're looking for some videos on how to use ProPresenter like this, there's some older videos of mine that you can look up. Um, you know, another software would be H2R Graphics. The problem is if you want to run it through an Ultra Studio or a Deck Link, you're going to have to run it through OBS. So now you're getting into some more technical stuff to get that working, but that's okay. If you are techie, you can definitely do that. Um, the other software I tend to use with these guys is Mad Mapper software, and that's when I do projection mapping or like super high-end graphics work with lots of different displays and monitors, etc. So those are uh, what I've done. And obviously, I've used the Ultra Studio in a lot more of my recent videos. Okay, these are all my more recent builds. The older ones I did, you know, in studio settings, I was using the Ultra Studio. Now, I still prefer the Ultra Studio. If you tell me, hey, I need you to run a show and some lower thirds, uh, I might just use the ATEM software itself. Oh, those lower thirds have to be animated? Okay, well, I'm gonna pick an Ultra Studio. Well, why wouldn't I just go off and pick a deck link? If you're gonna tell me, hey, we're doing, you know, we got playback of videos, we got lower thirds, you know, we need to be really compact, you all gotta fit on a six foot table. Now I might be going with the deck link. If I have setup time, then the deck link is a great option. Why? Because every time I am in ProPresenter and I plug this thing in, it never like recognizes and snaps to where I want it to be. So every time I'm having to like switch which port I'm using and like change, oh, I want this to be, you know, my screen one and this one to be my screen two. Oh, I got to activate my key and fill option. Oh, it went to the wrong port. And like I'm end up spending maybe 10 minutes, maybe more, uh, just finagling around with like which port is doing what. So that can be confusing. And if you're trying to hand this off to someone, that's definitely going to be detrimental. They're going to run into problems and things like that. So if you're using ProPresenter and a Declan card, just make sure you know what you're doing and be able to troubleshoot when you boot it up, when you turn it on, things like that. Um, it's great because it's a, for what you're getting, it is compact, meaning, you know, I'm getting four different outputs out of one computer running ProPresenter, and I can use that computer for other things as well. But just know that it is tricky and you will have problems, you will have to troubleshoot pretty much every time you boot this thing up. 
Um, the other thing is if I leave this plugged in for a really long time, I'm talking like weeks. Okay, so this is on and running weeks plugged into a computer or an iMac or a laptop or something. Um, and I shut down everything and I boot it back up. Sometimes I have to power cycle this guy as well, okay? Uh, and then when you power cycle it and it comes back up, now you gotta make sure all your connections are still lined up. You've already labeled your input in the switcher. So now you're like trying to change it either on the switcher or on here and change your buttons and your programming. It can be a hassle. Whereas the Ultra Studio 4K, Every time you use it, you know that uh, you just activate key and fill and pro presenter or whatever you're using, and you know it's always coming out, your key, sorry, your fill is always coming out of A, and your key is always coming out of B. That's consistent every time you cannot change that, okay? Now, other reasons I like the Ultra Studio, and I would recommend it to people, especially if you're just gonna like do a quick studio build or even your budget and you can have multiples of these, I would actually go with these guys. Um, troubleshooting on this is way easier. On the display, you can see if it's working or not, right? You, uh, by the way, if anything is showing up on the display, it means you are in fact connected to a computer. Doesn't matter if uh, you have this thing powered and you plug a source in until you connect it via Thunderbolt, right? Which is these guys right here. Until you connect it to a computer, you're not gonna see anything on the screen. So you're gonna know if it's working or not. Uh, in some of the nightclubs and builds I've done, I install this because other people are using it. So anytime they say, hey, they call me up and they have a problem, I'm like, hey, show me the Ultra Studio. Oh, nothing's on it. Okay, power cycle it. Unplug it from the computer, plug it back in. Whatever you need to do, it's super easy to tell and we fix these things in 15 seconds. So, uh, oh, reboot the software. Didn't recognize it when you booted it up because you had to power cycle it, whatever. So I'm not saying that you never have to troubleshoot with this guy, but it is a lot easier to troubleshoot with this guy. Okay, so again, my recommendation, bang for the buck, go with the deck link in the Sonnet enclosure, okay? You want reliability and ease of use, go with the 4K Ultra Studio. You're paying a little bit more, let's see, $1,000 for this guy, you're like 850 for, for this guy here. So yeah, it is, it is more, and you're getting technically less IO ports for it. You can do a little bit less with it, but if consistency and reliability is what you want, this guy. Let that be known, once you're troubleshoot it and, and you're up, this guy's great, okay? This has not gone out in the middle of a show or anything. It is very reliable once you boot it up. Once you have it configured, once you've troubleshooted it, etc., then it's very reliable. But you usually need to go through that steps and if you're powering down your system, powering it back up, you will go through that step pretty much at the beginning of your setup every single time, which can be annoying. So, uh, yes, I still recommend this guy, bang for the buck. Uh, but I will choose this to make my life easier any day if I don't need all the capabilities of this guy. So that is my small rant. Oh, and one thing to note, if you are looking at this guy because of the reliability and ease of use, et cetera, but you're only doing HD and you don't see yourself doing 4K, then you can totally go with the Ultra Studio HD mini version. Okay, that's about 550. So that's literally almost half the price of this guy. Um, and it does the exact same thing. You got the screen on the front, if you get the little Teranax um, screen for it. Um, and so I would highly suggest if you're doing only HD, just go with that. It's a smaller footprint, so it's a third instead of a half for a rack mount. Uh, that means you can fit more in. Um, and honestly, with both of these guys, I'm not doing 4K. I'm really only ever doing HD uh, or 1920 by 1080 if you wanna get specific. So. Um, that's my take on these guys. Hope that was helpful. I hadn't seen videos comparing the two for the ATEM series, for all this live production use, what you can use it for. Uh, note that I usually use them for outputs, but for softwares like Mad Mapper or things where I want an input, we know that ProPresenter can take an input now. We know uh, Mad Mapper and a bunch of other softwares can utilize both of these guys, okay, for inputs and outputs. All right, and the thing about the deck link is I can use you know, two or three ports for outputs and one port for input. For instance, uh, in ProPresenter, I use all four ports for outputs. I do a key and a fill for my graphic overlays. I do one for playback and I do one for a confidence monitor feed 
or a presenter feed, whatever you want to call it. It's got like the clock on it. It's got some other data on it. Um, it can have like what the next graphic or next slide is. And you've seen that in some of my other videos, me using that port as the uh, stage presenter screen. So that is a great use of all four input, uh, input outputs on these guys. Uh, yes, there are five ports, but you only get to use four as input outputs. And the fifth is a reference port uh, for just time alignment and things like that. So I hope that was helpful. And that's my take on the Ultra Studio 4K Mini and the deck link in the Sonic Enclosure. If you guys like that, go ahead and hit subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming out. And if you're looking for more information about topics like this, feel free to visit our website, www.liveproductionmastery.com. We have a lot more content coming out and a lot more nitty gritty on how to program these guys, how to set it up with different softwares, et cetera, et cetera. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.